there's a perfect storm going on in the Western world at the moment with our lack of exercise, obesity and our high sugar intake. This is leading to record numbers of people with diabetes, so let me tell you all about it. Hello, I'm Dr. Ed Hope and welcome to Sick Notes where I try my best to unpick medical mumbo jumbo and explain it in plain English. If you have symptoms of being tired all the time, increased thirst, weight loss, passing a lot of urine or blurred vision, you may go to the doctor and they give you a blood test and tell you you have type 2 diabetes. What does that mean? Well, let me tell you about it. You may have heard there are two types of diabetes, type 1 and type 2. In this video, I'm mainly going to be talking about type 2 diabetes because it is a lot more common. Although they both lead to high levels of sugar, glucose within the blood, therefore have the same long-term nasty complications. They have very different causes as to why the blood sugar levels are high, so for the most part the treatment is different. High levels of glucose in the blood over time damages the eyes, the kidneys, the nerves, most often in the hands and feet, increase your risk of infection and increases your risk of heart attacks and strokes. You'd struggle to think of a worse set of complications and high blood sugars day to day generally don't cause any symptoms but the damage is still going on. That's why it's so important to know about the disease, to have regular checkups and to monitor your blood sugar levels to make sure they're in a good range. So how does diabetes cause raised blood sugars? All of our cells need glucose for energy but there's definitely such thing as too much of a good thing. Our diets at the moment are crazy crazy high in sugar and our bodies just cannot process this over time. When you eat food and the sugar gets absorbed into the blood, your body produces insulin. Now insulin is kind of like a swipe card that allows glucose from the blood to pass into the cell. With high levels of blood glucose and therefore high levels of blood insulin over time, the cell becomes used to the insulin and it doesn't work as effectively. Essentially our insulin-like swipe card just doesn't work as well anymore, therefore it takes more and more insulin to get the same amount of glucose into the cell. This is called insulin resistance and it is the main problem in type 2 diabetes. Eventually your body will reach a limit to how much insulin it can produce, therefore your blood sugars will remain high but they'll be completely unregulated. So how does this blood sugar cause symptoms? Well, it's all down to blood vessels. These high levels of sugar or glucose in the blood cause lots of stress to the blood vessels. And that's not an analogy. We call it oxidative stress. And it tends to predominantly affect the tiny blood vessels that appear in the eyes, in the kidneys, and in the nervous system. For example, in the eye, the tiny blood vessels that supply your retina can burst, leaking out all the contents. Cells within the retina that are supplied by these blood vessels will therefore become starved of nutrients and therefore will end up dying. And because your retina is your photosensor for light, it causes visual impairment and can eventually lead to blindness. This is called diabetic retinopathy. And a similar thing happens with the blood vessels in the kidney. Now the kidney is a genius organ. Among other things, it helps to get rid of toxins. And how does it do this? I mean, think about it. How would you design something that could get rid of every single toxin in the blood? For a start, the liver helps out by breaking stuff down and make sure it can be dissolved into water so you can pee it out. But the kidney is also genius. So think about if you had to tidy a messy room there'd be two strategies really. The first is you'd go around and take every single piece of junk out from the room. But how do you know that you've got all the junk? You might find another piece lying around. And the second strategy, which is the kidney strategy, is you take everything out of the room and only put back in the useful things you need. So the kidney filters out all the small molecules and only reabsorbs the one it needs. And to do this, it needs a specialist supply of tiny blood vessels to create this filter that forces out these molecules. Diabetes damages this system and can cause problems with the kidneys. This is called diabetic nephropathy. Diabetic nephropathy is worse with high blood pressure, therefore an important way of managing this is controlling hypertension. The nerves in your body also have tiny blood vessels that can be damaged over the long term with high blood glucose levels. This tends to affect the long nerves first, so the ones in the hands and the feet. You get this distribution called the glove and stocking distribution, where you lose sensation in the hands and feet. We call this diabetic neuropathy. Losing sensation in your feet is particularly nasty because you lose the ability 
ability to realize how hard you're pushing your foot down when doing things just like walking and therefore you can just cause constant damage to soft tissue and bones and over time this can lead to some pretty bad damage to the foot because of these complications in the eyes the kidneys and the feet people with diabetes need regular eye exams regular blood pressure checks regular blood tests for kidney function and regular examinations of their feet. So those are the main complications due to the tiny blood vessels of the body being affected. But diabetes affects other blood vessels, for example, the ones in the brain and the heart, where you're five times more likely to have a stroke or suffer cardiovascular disease, such as angina or a heart attack. It's not all bad news because you have the ability to slow the progression of the disease. Day to day though, you may not notice your high blood sugar levels, even though the damage is being done. Therefore, the trick is to have good habits and to stick with them. Firstly, diet, a well-balanced diet with particular attention to carbohydrates and sugars. And this isn't gonna be easy because the big food companies have their teeth into supermarkets and news agents and vending machines. I mean, even in the hospital I work at, we have these amazing volunteers, often retired people giving back to the community, pushing around the trolleys round for patients and relatives. And what do they have in them? Well, it's sweets, chocolates, cakes. I mean, probably the most useful thing you can do with that trolley is just push it in the river. Secondly, losing weight, or more accurately, maintaining a healthy weight. Obviously, this is closely relinked to the first point, but the combination of sugar and fat damages the blood vessels even more and therefore accelerates the complications of diabetes. Thirdly, regular exercise. Now, I'm not talking about climbing Kilimanjaro. I just mean regular walks with your friends or maybe putting on some joggers and watching a YouTube video. Do that a few times a week and see where that goes. Us doctors are great at starting medications or increasing medications, and if that happens, it's even more important to make sure they're taken at the right time and to closely monitor your blood sugars. Finally, the last piece of advice is to work with your doctor, your diabetic nurse specialist, your optician, and your podiatrist to make sure you're on top of the disease and to reduce the risk of complications from diabetes. So I hope this has given you a brief overview on what type two diabetes is, what causes it, and and ways to treat it. I put some links and some clarifications in the description below. If you like this and want to see more, you can subscribe or check out some of the other videos on my channel. Thank you for watching.